Every second of every day, your brain is choosing what to ignore and what to pay attention to. But we all hear, see and feel the world in different ways. There's one condition, though, that really impacts how you communicate with people around you and sense the world. It affects over one in a hundred people and it's called Autism Spectrum Disorder, or Autism for short. This is Alex. He's 10 and he has autism. So, Alex, if you have to explain to people what it's like for you having autism, what, what do you say? It can cause me a lot of difficulties in day-to-day -day life um, because I absolutely love crowds and busy areas and people brushing past me. Someone with autism is on the autism spectrum. This is like a scale and different people are affected in different ways. We've come to the park and set up an experiment to demonstrate how Alex's autism affects his senses. What I've done is I've labelled the faders, which are like the volume knobs, with different sounds. And these are all the sounds we can hear around us. And when you're talking, I know there's a bit of traffic, there's some birds singing, I can hear the kids playing over there in the playground, there's a dog barking. But mainly, I can hear you, and my brain can just turn all these other sounds off. Can you show me maybe what it's like for you? I don't have as much control over it, so I'll just read them all up there. But then I won't be able to block those out a little bit. But I can't block them out anywhere near as much as you did. Being overloaded with all this sensory information can lead to something called a meltdown. What's it like when you're having a meltdown in your head? Well, I just really kind of um, upset and angry and, I suppose, distressed and then I'd I'm really not calm. Although autism can be disorientating and confusing, some autistic people are able to concentrate incredibly well on something they love. And for Alex, that's filmmaking. We've come to the Autism Show in Manchester. With us are some of Alex's friends who often act in his films. What do you think it is about autism and directing films that those two things work quite well together? Focusing on one task that he's doing at once. Yeah, he's very focused and a lot of the time has better ideas than us. To help Alex's friends understand what it can be like to have autism, we're giving them these virtual reality goggles and headphones which will play an autism simulation. Why don't you try it? Do you know, I've never tried virtual reality before. I can hear every single noise in this room and the light is very dazzling and I can't focus on the thing I think I need to be paying attention to is this lady who's telling me to wait but I can't understand what she's saying. Wow! What did you think of it, Jacob? It was really intense of what was going to happen next. It's very overwhelming, like... You can't concentrate on one thing because there's just so much going on. I thought it explained to me a lot more about how being autistic is. And it was kind of stressful. You might know someone with autism. You may have autism yourself. But even if you do, it can be very hard to know what other people with autism are going through. There are a few things you can do to help. You can give people time. You can speak really clearly and you can remember that someone with autism may be experiencing the world in a more stressful way. Most importantly, autism isn't the main thing about anybody. People on the autism spectrum can still do absolutely amazing things. And I'm certain that one day I'm going to be in the cinema watching a film directed by Alex. Wolves can be really annoying sometimes and make you wish you could see over them or through them. Zand, you're not eating my cake, are you? No, no, no cake here, no. Good. Now, your skin can be a little bit like a wool. When you get a medical problem on the outside, it's easy to see it, treat it and watch it heal. But when you get medical mysteries going on inside the body, there's one hospital department you need to turn to for help, the radiology department, because they've got all kinds of cool kit that can actually see inside the body. A bit like this periscope lets me see over the wall. Sand! The new radiology department at Alderhay cost a whopping £7 million. This department x-rays 75,000 patients a year, and more than half of those have their snaps taken on this, a plain film x-ray machine. X-rays let doctors look at your bones. 
They're like a super powerful version of ordinary light, which can pass through your skin. When they meet bones, X-rays stop dead in their tracks and the perfect picture can be taken. It's not just bones that show up in an X-ray, though. I'm heading to another part of the radiology department to see a different type of X-ray machine. This one is used to study people who have problems swallowing. Nine-year-old Isabel is currently fed through a tube in her stomach as a result of having an operation. She's come to the radiology department today for a video fluoroscopy test to see if it's now safe for her to eat and drink normally. So I'm wearing this apron and it is very heavy because it's made of lead and that protects me from radiation. Radiation isn't dangerous for the patients, but if you get a little bit every day, that could be dangerous, so you wear a bit of protection. I'd have preferred a green one. We're going to give you some well yogurt to eat, OK? Isabel's dad feeds her some special liquid which X-rays can't pass through, so it shows up black on the image. Can you see it? What's amazing about it is that you're making, if you like, an X-ray movie, so we can see the liquid going down her throat as a video, and that means we can make sure that it's safe for her to keep swallowing and that none of the food is going down the wrong way. So, Isabel's esophagus is working fine. The fluoroscopy has shown the doctors that it's safe for her to start eating again. Isn't that amazing? After a whole year of being fed through a tube. It's busy in the radiology department today. Down the corridor, nine-year-old Neve is having another sort of picture taken called an ultrasound for a mystery swelling in her foot. Here to do that is Dr. Musa Kalim. The way the ultrasound machine is working is it's using a probe which emits a very, very high frequency noise, such a high pitch that you can't hear it. And those sound waves bounce back differently depending on whether they hit bone or whether they hit muscle or different things. And it's listening for the echoes coming back and then putting those echoes into an image. This area which looks darker than the normal tissues around the bone. So bone is here. So there's something, possibly a splinter, irritating Neve's foot that will require further investigation. Have you given it a name? Jeff. That's a great name. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Zond. Without the amazing radiology department at Alderhey Hospital, the doctors and other experts would have to spend a lot more time guessing about diagnosing people's conditions. But these machines are so powerful, they can see deep inside your body. They could even see a piece of cake inside your stomach. Don't tell Dr Chris! 